more than 40 years ago, this Hudson 8 captured headlines across Australia. To car buffs of the day, it was one of the most exciting vehicles on the road and on the racetracks. Today it's running just as smoothly as it did when it burst onto the Australian scene in 1935, maintained in perfect running order by Sydney mechanic Clive Gibson. He first saw it racing in a hill climb at Waterfall near Sydney in 1938. Like many boys in those days, Clive Gibson often dreamed of sitting at the wheel of the flashing red car, roaring through the formidable 100 miles an hour barrier. The car was specially designed and made in Sydney for theatre magnate Gus McIntyre, one of the most colourful Australian motoring personalities of the 30s. 100 miles an hour then wasn't commonplace, but McIntyre's Hudson Special, as the car was called, repeatedly did it. Powered by an American straight-eight Hudson engine, the car, in 1937 and 1938, won the Wakefield Trophy, then the most arduous test of car and driver in Australia. It was a series of 12 trials, hill climbs, water splashes, acceleration tests and speed runs. In 1935, McIntyre's team tried to break the Australian speed record of 115 miles an hour, but heavy rain prevented the big car from doing more than 108 miles an hour. In 1941, the 200 horsepower engine took the Hudson from Melbourne to Sydney in 8 hours 15 minutes, an unofficial record that still stands as a tribute to the men and machines of the days when motorsport had a dirt, dust and cinders image. A maker for enthusiastic drivers in 1936 was this hill climb track at Waterfall, south of Sydney. It was made by the Light Car Club of New South Wales, an organisation that eventually became the Australian Sporting Car Club. On a good weekend, up to 50 cars would compete. It was very much a sport for the wealthy. Hill climb events such as this one attracted only small crowds in those days. Spectators preferred the bigger drama of the Penrith Speedway in Sydney, when up to 25,000 people would line the track, most of them travelling there by train. But even the hill climbs gave spectators and drivers unexpected thrills. It was common in the 30s to close parts of main roads for hill climb events. Broughton Pass in the Kangaroo Valley, on the southern tablelands of New South Wales, was one of the most gruelling stretches of road used by the light car club to test cars and drivers. Many of the cars that raced on Broughton Pass were classic cars of the day, such as this 1934 Ford V8 Roadster. On the dirt road, even the best of drivers ran into trouble. Jack Saywell plowed his railton into a fence, but escaped uninjured. A star performer in the pre-war hill climbs was the Hudson Special. On this run, owner Gus McIntyre was at the wheel. supercharged Auburn Roadster and a 1936 Pontiac Sloper. One of the regular winners in the mid-30s was Jack James Alfa Romeo. In June 1937, driver Frank Kleinig set a record on Broughton Pass with the Hudson Special and this was the winning run. In pre-war days, there was an endless round of hill climbs, economy runs, 24-hour trials and Grand Prix events that popularised motorsports across the country. And international events began to attract the Australian competitors too. The Hudson 8 was prepared to compete in a race from Algiers to Johannesburg, carrying a spare engine in the boot. 
The event was cancelled because of the outbreak of war in Abyssinia. Driver Frank Kleinig bought the Hudson in 1940. It had only one more race in 1948, with wild Bill McLaughlin at the wheel. Then it languished in a shed for almost 20 years. Clive Gibson bought the car from Kleinig in 1972 for $2,000. He estimates that he spent $8,000 getting it back to original condition. As in the old days, the engine of the Hudson Special has a healthy roar. It shows no signs of age. In 42 years, it's clocked up only 30,000 miles. It dies very nicely and handles well, but uh, at the moment it wouldn't handle as well as when it raced. Uh, when it was racing, it had bound springs, special shock absorbers, and that made it ride very hard for ordinary road use. I've taken all these off to make it comfortable for a road car, but that's far away from the original handling that it had originally. It is still fairly light to handle, though, isn't it? Yeah, it drives beautifully, and as a, a pleasure car, it's very nice to drive, but uh, to throw it around in hard corners, it's uh, not like it used to be. Now, do you think it could go faster today than when it was racing in the 30s? Uh, no, they put so much time into the uh, uh, tuning of the car that when it went out, it always uh, was going as well as you could ever get it to go. Admittedly, I've got a little bit more modern equipment on it, but it still went very hard in those days. Clive Gibson has no plans to sell the racing veteran, even though American vintage car collectors would pay more than $30,000 for it. To him, the Hudson Special is too special to part with. <laughs>